Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for Friday, January the 5th, 2018. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions to take a look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the market structure, and then we drill down to our trade levels, our targets, and our hypotheses. Our hypotheses are our trade plans. We do not know what the market's going to do. Therefore, we look at what the possible auction would look like based on who's on, in control. We create two main hypotheses, and then we create two alter, alternative hypotheses. The alternative hypotheses are for expansion. Uh, this is a subscription room. If you're interested in checking it out, send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com. There's no website. There's no blog. This is not a commercial venture. We do everything live here in the go-to, and we do live trading analysis during the course of the trading day. Please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results in the trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. So yesterday, <clears throat> our uh, our trade plan was to uh, uh, open auction out of range, move down towards the uh, the uh, prior day range, possibly uh, come into uh, taking out this uh, naked VPOC and then finding buyers and rotating up through what was a new all-time high, uh, you know, put in the uh, the Globex. Um, hypo 2 was an open auction, pop up, take out the overnight high, and then come down into the body and go sideways. Hypo 3 was a gap and go day, um, and uh, our uh, trade plan for that was an open drive or an open test drive, uh, a push up into new territory, looking for a move into the 2730s and then basically going sideways and closing in around the 2425 area. And that's exactly what we got. We've got hypo three as the uh, gap and go. Hold on one second. I just got to adjust a stop here. Love me some non-farm payroll volatility in gold. Actually, it was a pretty nice move on the ES too. <clears throat> so yesterday we had some uh, some uh, you know a gap and balance, and uh, then overnight they uh, they took it up again and again. We've got an unequalized high. We'll talk about that in just one minute. Uh, our VPOC uh, is at. 27.25.50. Our close was 27.24, so we closed where we anticipated, um, but uh, didn't get a lot of uh, of extension. Now today we're going to gap up again, and if you look at the uh, daily macro. What we want to watch for here is we're going to get another gap. So we got a breakout gap. We got a continuation gap. We have to, you know, we can get a run, we can get a runaway gap again. And this market uh, is running very strong right now. Uh, but watch the volume when we open uh, today. If it's really heavy, this could turn to be, turn out to be an exhaustion gap. And exhaustion gaps are uh, are uh, detailed by having very high volume because that's when that's they happen near the ends of runs long runs and that's when people really start to cover um and uh and you know i know somebody that's going to be covering heavy heavy this morning so just be careful on the open if it turns into a drive uh don't fight it but if you if you see two sided action and we don't hold the open uh, and you see heavy heavy volume coming in, then we're likely to come down and uh, and test the uh, the 29 area and come inside of yesterday's uh, range on this. And this could 
turn out to be uh, a balancing and possibly even an island top. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying the things to look for. So this is not. We, we, we'll see if there's a drive. If there's a drive, then it's going to be a runaway uh, gap and uh, likely not come back and get filled. If it's uh, if it's a gap with heavy volume, then you know we're likely to rotate down as uh, as people are going to be covering, and it'll be an exhaustive gap. Um, also, keep in mind that we do have a new all-time high. The new all-time high is an unequalized high at uh, 2734.75. So our overnight high at 34.75 is our overnight high and a Globex all-time high, which is unequalized. So even if we pull back, I'm still expecting to come up and hit this at some point in time. Uh, doesn't have to be today, but unequalized highs, the highs that are put in Globex, uh, are, uh, you know, have a high probability of being tested uh, coming up. But let's just take a, uh, a step back and take a look at the news. First of all, we did have uh, some, uh, some news at 8.30. We had non-farm. Uh, we had average early earnings was a miss. Average weekly was a miss. Government payrolls uh, was a miss. Manufacturing payrolls was a big beat. Non-farm, the most important, was a miss. Um, trade balance uh, was uh, a miss as well. Private non-farm payrolls was a miss. Uh, in Canada, it was a little bit different story. Uh, our unemployment rate came out at 4.1. Our employment change uh, was a major, major uh, uh, beat, and uh, our unemployment rate is reduced to 5.7, and uh, trade balance uh, was a little bit bigger than expected. Uh, in 59 minutes, we've got durable goods and factory orders. Uh, 59 minutes, uh, ISM non-manufacturing. Uh, that, again, will be something that could be uh, a market mover. ISM, non-manufacturing PMI, same thing. And then we've got uh, Canadian IV PMI. We've got uh, FOMC, Harker speaking, uh, Mester speaking. Uh, we've got the rig count. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, Bank of England, uh, you know, speaking. I mean, there is a lot of news today. Uh, so just... Uh, make sure that uh, you're careful. It's Friday. It's the first week of the uh, year. You want to go into the end of the uh, the week uh, not uh, in a really bad position. Uh, Taking a look at the uh, the macro, I always like to start looking at uh, sing a simple candlestick chart. I'm really watching this moving average here, EMA, 20 SMA. This is an IEMA, 20 SMA. I am testing these uh, uh, Pearson PPT, uh, PPTs or PPSs for a friend of mine. Um, you know, I use this to give me an idea of where we are in the trend in terms of each time frame. Uh, I also look for chart patterns. We've been following this uh, this upward sloping fork for uh, quite some time now, and you can see that we are testing the upper parameters of it today. Um, so there could be some res resistance up here. It doesn't have to be just because there's a line there. But uh, typically, uh, you know, we could see a bit of a, a pullback from here. We do have a technical gap on the monthly, but that technical gap doesn't even get closed until we back into the 2550 area. Going to, and that's uh, a couple hundred points below us, uh, almost a couple hundred points below us. So uh, this trend is still very strong even with a small pullback. On the weekly, uh, you can see good slope and separation. Uh, no real uh, uh, technical gap, uh, you know, uh, get a test of the, uh, of the trend up will take us back to the 2650 area. Uh, that's still, you know, uh, 70, 80 points below us. Going to the daily, you can see that we have gone parabolic. After coming back and testing the 20 SMA, we we popped and uh, and we're above. We've got a technical gap that's being created here. Um, going to the four hour, you can see we've just had a very strong stair step. Move up, 
go sideways, accept value, move up, go sideways, accept value, move up, go sideways, accept, accept value. This is likely going to be either a sideways uh, action or a possible pullback. We do have a technical gap up here. <coughs> Watch this four hour. This four hour could turn into a FUBAR Mr. Sneaky. Just remember, it's on the four hour. Uh, and you'd have to follow, you'd have to wait for the Mr. Sneaky to come in, and then you'd look for a short. And because it's four hours, it can be uh, rather choppy. Uh, so it's, you know, you use the four hours more for swing position than for trying to scalp. Going to the 30 minute, you can see that we're uh, going sideways. We did just, uh, you know, uh, test, uh, you know, the range. Uh, that we've been in here uh, on the news. We dipped down on the news all the way to the low of 29.75, almost coming back to the range high from yesterday. And then they took it right back up, put in a new all-time high, and now come back to the scene of the crime. And we're below the scene of the crime of the non-farm. Going to the five-minute, you can see that, uh, you know, we did uh break below the nine and the 20 right now and uh coming back into uh this area of resistance and we'll see if we uh we find support here or whether we come back and get a possible trend change into the rth session and uh, come back and close that uh, gap so again taking a look at the uh the structure there's not a lot to guide us up here um, we had that measured move at 33.75. Uh, that's been taken out in the Globex. There's another measured move that goes from November 15th to November 30th to December the 1st, and that is 27.50 on the nose. We've got to mark that on there because this could still this could still have some legs. Type with this finger. Okay, so taking a look at our overnight inventory, our overnight inventory is, you know, pretty much I'd say uh, 80 to 90 percent net long in uh, in uh, time and price. Uh, we have shifted our VPOC up again. Our uh, overnight VPOC is up at 31.75. Basically, uh, kind of a trend overnight. Again, look at the volume. Okay, that's price discovery. Okay, and that's likely to continue of heavy volume coming in uh, on the open. So it's going to be an interesting open. Be patient. Okay, wait to see. Don't try to just uh, guess. Um, we've got an LVN right here at basically the 29. Uh, that's going to be our over underline, of course. Uh, the, yesterday's uh, uh, RTH, um, let me just go to the RTH. Yesterday's RTH, very, very good kurtosis, nice Gaussian distribution. This value <laughs> area is going to be very valid. So hold on one second, just adjusting my stop again. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I am running short right now on gold from 22.7. All right, so uh, we have a very valid value area. So watch for this. Uh, this valid uh, this value area if we get inside of it and hold look for a trip through which will take us down to taking it to close and testing yesterday's mid it pretty much would uh, confirm uh, that this is a uh, is a possible exhaustive gap so moving our uh, numbers over our overnight low is down at 2350 uh, uh, again but, you know, increasing the argument, if we leave that overnight high alone, come down and get inside of the range, get inside of the value, I'd be targeting the Globex low as a takeout. Um, and we've got our 
uh, LVN, our mid, and our VWAP from overnight at the 29. That is going to be our over underline. What I mean by that is, you know, above it, I'm still looking for that uh, high to be uh, equalized. Uh, below it, I'm looking for a move down into value and uh, and possible takeout of the overnight low in an 80% destination trade. Um, the value uh, the value areas have to be uh, pay attention to. And then there's really not much uh, below us, so I'd be looking for, you know, looking at the uh, at the 1825 half gap from yesterday's gap is uh, is down at 2714. And again, there's really nothing above us. Uh, our overnight VPOC is at uh, just below us at uh, 3175. It's likely to get taken out, uh, you know, on the open. If we open up uh, down, down in this 32 area, <coughs> likely going to see this uh, this 3175 uh, uh, taken out. Uh, market has a probability of coming down to those uh, Globex VPOX. Um, our half gap right now, if we open, what time is it? Uh, we still got 20 minutes. Right now, if we open up in the 32 uh, and a quarter area, and our close was 24, our half gap is going to be 28 area. Okay, now, those are our levels, oh, our uh, average true range. Our 20-period average true range is running in at 16.30. So 23.50, the overnight low, plus the 16.30. Our upside ATR target is 39.75. Off of our current overnight low, I mean high, of 34.75, our downside ATR target is 18.37. And look at that. That uh, takes us down to yesterday's range low. And our daily ATR 1630, our week open is our year open, which is at uh, 2675 plus 1630. 26, oh, that's, that's wrong. Um, our 2675 and a quarter plus 16.38. Calculator is messing around me. Um, 2675, 25 plus 1630. Our uh, upside critical mass is 2691. So we're nowhere near uh, critical mass. So uh, if we, you know, I don't think it's going to affect us much because we're already, there's no chance that we're going to get back to the 2691s today unless we have a really, really big down day. So in terms of hypotheses, <coughs> same thing. I mean, it doesn't really uh, change, but I'm going to flip my hypo 1 and hypo 2 because I've got to look at the possibility of, of an ex exhaustive uh, gap. So I'm looking for an open auction out of range. I'm looking for a push up towards the overnight high and somewhere between the overnight high and possibly just above the overnight high, I'm looking for uh, responsive selling, and I'm looking for a rotation down, chopping at the 29, then failing and coming down into yesterday's range and basically going sideways in its, uh, in its range. 
and closing again somewhere where we closed yesterday around the 23 to 25 area. That is hypo one. Hypo two, which has got equal weight, okay, is an open auction, uh, outer range, a push down into the uh, 29. If we get through the 29 and we don't bounce at the 27, then I'm looking for it to come down into the value area, come down and close the gap base and start working its way back up. Uh, and whether we get to the overnight high or not, I'm not sure, uh, but that's hypo two. Hypo three is a runaway gap, a uh, open drive or an open test drive, failure to close the gap, possibly just uh, you know, close the range gap, but basically a bounce uh, without filling the gap or getting into value. So somewhere between 29 and 27, finding buyers and rotating us and continuing up towards that 2740, possibly <coughs> even up to the 2750. If this is a runaway gap, it could be a strong trend day up again. So you had a pause, a gap and pause, and then a runaway gap and a strong trend, which could be uh, you know, the start of a blow off top. Hold on a second. I just got to move the stop down again. All right. And then uh, that is our uh, four main hypotheses. Uh, we are just setting up for a, uh, a double rankle reversal here. So um, watch this, uh, this 32 area. Um, it is coming into the open. So it's, you know, Time of day is not the best, but this indicates that we're likely to get a push down into that 29 area, 29.50 being the target right now. All right, taking a look at gold. Gold, again, you know, we were talking about this, that we were looking for a, uh, a uh, Sideways consolidation. I said if we got above the 3280, got outside of that uh, that uh, value area from yesterday, uh, it was a little bit lower. You can see uh, it was at 1319 area. I said watch that 1319 1320 area. If we got above it. We're likely to go to the 27. We got to the 27. Now today they've come back inside of this balance and same thing. I'm looking for them to chop around in this uh, in this 16 to 15 area. Uh, it's expanded to the 18, 19, so between 15 and 19. Uh, but if we don't hold the 16, look for them to travel through the value down into the 1330. That's what I'm hoping for right now. Uh, currently right now I've got my stop at uh, 1780 uh, and looking for them to come down and test the other side of this uh, uh, value area on the four day micro composite. If we don't hold the 13, then we could get the move, the start of the move down towards, uh, you know, this uh, distribution and the, towards the, uh, the composite VPOC that goes all the way back to 2008. But right now, the immediate targets would be <coughs> to come down here into testing the 1300 with the first target right here at the 1308.80. That's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.